Hello everybody. We, today we're playing Plasti City. Um, last night I was doing some window shopping on t um, on Steam. So we'll go ahead and try some games today. See how it is. I don't know anything about this game. I just looked at the little preview they had. It looked kind of cool. You know, and I love eco games. when the trash was everywhere. sewer water. It's not very cool, man. Yes, I'm trying to take it off your head. What am I supposed to do? Okay, hold on. Interact. Control. It wasn't working. There we go. There you go, puppy. Well, I can't follow you down that way. Oh look, a nice house. This is our house. I'll never forget what my mother always told me. Hope seems lost. It's never too late to do the right thing. I 
set out to Avalon Island. I needed a home, and I knew it was a beautiful place. Alright, let's play with the puppy for a little bit. We're gonna need a companion in this plastic filled world. Moving forward, but I often had more than one way past any obstacle. Puppy, get out of there! Puppy! Puppy!
this is kind of boring. Okay, we'll play something else. Let's play this one. They still in line? Man, by four, I'm already on my way home. Our character is Zach Riley, a young man in his late 20s partying with his college buddy Johnny. He's standing in the queue that gives access to fair, fairly new and trendy nightclub, The Heartless. Johnny's not feeling very well. He is hunched behind us, staggering slightly with a blank stare. Are you sure you want to keep the party going, stud? Trying to focus his gaze and blinking effusively. Of course, you bastard, he shouts as he raises the half-empty beer bottle in his hand. This has to be our big night, and we have to get in however we can. But you're not going to get in all drunk already. Before Johnny finishes his sentence, you hear a loud snort behind you. As you turn around, you notice how the bouncer starts across his arms and frown. Get the hell out of here, fucking drunks, he shouts grimly. There's no point in trying to get into another drug at this hour, and certainly not with Johnny in this state. We're leaving. When you turn around with the intention of leaving the queue, Johnny's face twists into a pitiful grimace. No, man. It's our big night. I'm not moving. You idiot. If I leave him alone, he'll end up in the ICU. One drink, Johnny. One, and then we're leaving. You idiot. Fine. Johnny's appearance is truly pitiful. The multiple stains on his shirt, wrinkled and unbuttoned, are a decadent reflection of all the excess commi excesses committed during the night. His breath smells of the worst absinthe, and although you've spent a thousand raves together, you've never seen him like this. A sudden burst of lucidity brightens his face. Chill, man, he exclaims, waving open his free hand. I just need a few seconds to catch my breath. I'm not going to let that bitter bitch ruin this night for me. 
he adds, before taking the last wig from the bottle, you focus on getting them to let us through. You look at Johnny for a couple of seconds, and a few drops of beer run down, a few drops of beer run down his fingers, glinting off the wedding ring on his finger. You can't help but feel deeply sorry for him. Johnny, if, every th if after everything you've had to drink, you're still thinking about her, one more drink isn't going to solve anything, but I owe you. Ah, uh, is he getting divorced? Poor guy. Okay, let's talk to this bouncer. A hulking disco bouncer scowls at you as soon as he sees you approaching. He rolls his eyes and lets out another sigh. What do you want, scum? Don't you have a better place to drop dead? He adds without even looking you in the eye. I promise him one more, boss. Quick in and out, then straight home. You can clearly see the veins in the bouncer's forehead swell more and more. His pupils absurdly dilated, reveal the various substances consumed throughout the night, almost as a warning. Aw, oh, so he's on shit, too! Careful now. The bouncer judges you slowly. After a few close seconds, he seems to dismiss the idea of crushing your head like a watermelon. Out. Now. Taking hold of Johnny by his arm, you take a couple of steps backward. Come on, man. Let's go. Turning around, suddenly your attention is completely captivated by the most beautiful eyes you have ever seen. A woman tall and slender, absolutely perfect. Hair dyed red and tied in two two buns, bright, bleh, bright green eyes and smooth ivory skin walks towards the entrance. As she reaches your side, you feel the world grind the world grind to a halt. As she slowly looks down and stares directly at you, a warm half smile on her face pierces your soul. She can't be real, right? Lifting her face again, the woman continues on her way past the bouncer. He greets her with a quick nod of his head, and her perfect figure disappears amidst the noise of the nightclub. What was that? You have seen a lot of other women in your life, but never some like her. Still numb, paralyzed by the experience, you feel trapped in your own mind, struggling to superimpose reason on whatever it is that is asking you to break through until you find her. I need to get into that club, whatever it takes. Johnny? Johnny's still by your side, of course, but right now he's the least of your problems. If you had to leave him lying right there to get in, lying on his own puke, you would do it in a heartbeat. I'm not that drunk. My mind didn't strike my last drink, right? No. No way. An insistent buzzing sound brings you out of your reverie. Zach, dude, Zach. The words slip slowly and heavily from his lips. Are you alright, Zach? You're very pale, Zach. Zach, you're not well, Zach. Your own name begins to sound strange, repeated so many times by someone in such a state of dispossession. Johnny, you just saw that woman too, didn't you? Johnny, you <laughs> okay. Johnny's face twists into a grimace of confusion. Dude? By the time you realize that Johnny's voice sounds far away, you realize that you are walking toward the entrance of the club. You, said, you see the bouncer's arm go up and you close your eyes in anticipation. From the, walker, from the bouncer's walkie-talkie, a static crap message finds a way to you. Let them through, Victor. It really is a special moment. Lifting the walkie to his mouth, of course, sir. Returning the device in a holster on his belt, Victor, the mountain of a muscle that until now had blocked your entrance, points at you with his index finger. You can come in, your friend too. If you don't behave, there will be no warnings. Understood? Miracles do happen at 4.35 in the morning. Hey, Momo! Yeah, I was playing a different game earlier, but it was boring, so I switched over to this. Yes, Johnny, come on. The last one's on me. Like a wave crashing violently against the shore, a myriad of colors, smells, and sounds explode against your senses. Just ten minutes ago, you would have gladly dragged Johnny home. Now, your whole world swirls and dances, merging with the trance music and the lights of the heartless. In your mind, only one image keeps the situation coherent. That woman, her eyes, drilled into your consciousness, call out to you, inviting you to meet her. 
Tommy, pull yourself together for God's sake, at least until I get her name. <laughs> Johnny behind you seems to come to now, come to, now that he sees himself inside the club. We did it, he said, shaking his head and wiping the corner of his mouth. I knew you'd get us in, Zach, that's why I like you. He pauses for a second and swallows what was probably a gag. Ew, it's pushing too much. I think it's too late now, but control yourself, okay? I wouldn't want to get our asses kicked out of here, man. Don't worry, for the moment I'm going to order something without alcohol. Water. Water, for instance. Yes! What a splendid idea! The word comes inordinately strange coming from him. It is possible that he has not touched a drop for days. I'm going to the bar, Zach. When I'm a little bit better, we'll have the last one, okay? Sure, man. I'll walk around while I'm at it. I've never been here before, and I like the vibe. And the people who seem to follow it, of course. Let's have some fun. designer in decline. In either case, his presence clashes tremendously with the place. As you approach, he slowly turns his head and on his face, a smirk spreads from ear to ear. Walker, straight out of the vapors of the night and straight to the heartless like the prodigal son of the good book. Like Dorothy and her stupid yellow tile. Sit down, son or stand as you prefer, but give me your name and I'll give you mine. It's Zach Riley. Have you met before? Now we have Zach Riley. Now we have. All beginnings are awkward, but where we're going, the only thing that matters are the endings. They call me Lewis. Lewis Bird. Uh, nice to meet you, Lewis. Are you a regular here? Regular, of course. In every place I am regular, even if I have never been here. I even, uh, bleh, bleh, I can't talk about Even if I have never been there. But this place, I know it. Oh yes, I know it well, even if it doesn't know me. I haven't introduced myself, you know? To the owners? No, to the heartless! Owners come and go, the ridiculous wars, the various centuries of history and the mountains of castles. And when all the dust has settled, the only thing that remains is the place. This heartless place. Ah. You know what? I know what bloodline he's from. He's one of the crazy ones. Are you saying that the regency of the club changed his hands a lot, or am I missing the point? Taking a slow swig from his glass, looking me straight in the eye. Oh, yes. Constantly. Leaving the empty glass in the bar, he gazes at the bottom of the vessel. Something tells me we'll soon see a new change, Zach Riley. I understand, Emma. Gonna take a walk, okay? Sure, see you around, Walker. Don't get lost in the night. Okay. Do, 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 do. The whole night has led you to this moment. The floor is yours, baby. Hey Johnny, come on, let's sweat out all the booze you've been drinking. Hey Johnny, let's dance. Of course! With astonishing agility for someone in his current state, Johnny dashes to the dance floor and you both begin to sway to the decadent beat of the music. Hey, look at those moves! This is a vibe, I like this. Okay. We're a show, that's for sure, but I don't give a shit. This is great. For the first time in the entire night, you feel liberated. Excellent! Oh, we gotta get in good with the DJ, too. The bartender is a young girl. You estimate her to be about your age, although her demeanor is at least right now much more elegant than yours. She occupies her thoughts wiping glasses behind a bar with a dark red cloth, paying special attention to each one as if they were much more valuable than they let on. Her hands work fast, and perhaps because of the effects of all the alcohol you've had so far, they are complicated to follow. 
As you instinctively lean on the bar, her icy blue gaze pins you to the spot. What will it be? Ooh, her eyes look crazy. Kind of pretty though. What will it be? Her voice is as cold as her eyes, and yet she invites you to have one more drink, a strong one. Before you can respond, blurt out that Jaeger bond that you're sure you'd instantly regret. Johnny comes to rescue. Give me a few minutes, Zach. Don't start without me. Sure, man. Chill. I'm going for a walk and we'll take that last one, okay? Alright, so we're not ready for a drink. Gonna give him some time. Gonna give him some time. What is this? What's the shit on the floor? Why is there stuff on the floor? Who left this? A crumpled piece of paper on the floor seems to have found its place among all the film and trash decorating the dance floor. Does it have something written on it? Let's see. Let's see. Unfolding it, you realize that it is an attempt at a poem, handwritten and crudely written. The author clearly doesn't know how to rhyme, although his intentions and feelings are clear from the first line. Ugh, oh, it's embarrassing. Who the hell nowadays is so intense? What's wrong with intense? Nice. Before you, a couple converse quietly, blocking the exit to the terrace. With regal bearing and elegant attire, they don't look the usual. They don't look like the usual clientele of a club of this type. At this time of night, he wears his hair slicked back and gel, completely black like his eyes. She, also dressed in a suit, has half her head shaved, with the other half descending in a casket of pale blonde over her left shoulder. Both seem to understand each other perfectly over the thunderous music without a hitch. When they see you approach, their heads turn slightly, visibly annoyed by the interruption. What do you want, kiddo? The words slither slowly and venomously, sending a shiver up and down your spine. Excuse me, I just wanted to go out to the terrace for a moment. Don't be like that, she says, tapping her knuckles on her partner's shoulder. Bad luck, cutie. The terrace is occupied. Evaluating you from head to toe, she seems to enjoy the embarrassment you are feeling right now. Never has a compliment sounded so insulting to you. Get lost.
charisma, composure, hard. Okay, okay, let's, you know what? Let's shoot our shot. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Sorry, I saw you at the entrance and no, we're not going for that. We're going for the charisma, composure, and hard. <laughs> Making you feel uncomfortable is the last thing I would want to make you feel tonight. Did we get it? Success? Success. Okay. The young woman arches her eyebrows in a gesture of amused surprise and let's have a light rinse laugh. <laughs> you seem to have quickly found the courage you lack. Indeed, we have to during intense situations, girl. You know you pressure? <laughs> Taking a small sip from her glass and licking the corners of her mouth, she lifts her chin. Are you going to tell me your name anytime soon, brave one? Nailed it. Zach. Zach Riley. Diane, tell me, Zach, what are you and your friend doing at the Heartless at this hour? Your friend, if you hadn't just been reminded, you would have completely forgotten that Johnny's still at the bar, battling an alcoholic coma and heartbreak. Ah yes, my friend is going through a rough patch. He just left his wife. He needed a boy's night out, and how could I let him down? Do not try. Do not. A little bit of that. That. Man. Okay. Try not to leave him alone, then, Zach Riley. And if you can, get home before you do something you might regret. No good decision is made after midnight. Raising an empty hand, imitating a toast. Too bad decisions then, and I'm going to take a spin. Talk to you later. Raising her glass in response, Diane blinks at you and sips slowly. Of course that. Okay. Talk to the DJ. The DJ is very into the music, much more than the rhythm would invite you to think. If you look for a couple of seconds, you're immediately able to realize that in his head, he's following a melody of his own, moving with a cadence contrary to that of the pipe music. He seems to have dressed in clothes from two different closets, that of an 80s punk and that of a nouveau riche. Danny's boy looking to sell a pair of his scheme. Strangely, it's not a look that looks bad on him. He's not even wearing his headphones, so if you yell at him, you understand if he will hear you. Why would I yell at the DJ? Okay, charisma with moderate. DJ, do you know the one that goes dun dun? Success! Yes. Yeah, this is a club. We're at the club heartless. Of course. Okay, okay. I've had enough fun by my own. I should go back to Johnny. But there's an open door. Have we truly had enough fun on our own? Truly? Have we really? I don't think we have. I don't think we've had enough fun by ourselves. I think we should I think we should get into more trouble. <laughs> on the other side you hear a lot of movement. Suddenly a muffled scream startles you. Fuck. Is everything alright? Yeah, relax. Girl stuff. They must be shooting up, I imagine. In any case, I'm not going to go there. Oh, you think they have in the drugs? They have in the drugs, Silvertail? Locked by means of a magnetic card reader. Such exclusive security measures. This looks like we won't be able to go out on the terrace anytime soon. Okay, but this door is open. What's this? A sort of mat or black cloth hanging between the two doors displays a strange symbol, painted in red in a careless manner. It's quite out of tune with the rest of the decoration, and I don't know what the hell it is either. The logo of some band around here, maybe? I'ma leave the door open. A huge red painted graffiti on the wall dominates the room. A-C-A-D with each A stylized as the anarchist symbol. Okay, so this is an anarch club. Or an anarch tagged it. All cops are bastards, huh? More and more graffiti like this can be seen all over the city. The situation is getting more and more tense. Further inspect the graffiti.
Did I do it? Success! Okay. Another graffiti, smaller and almost erased, finishes off at the end of the B. Fuck them, camis. I'm not familiar with that insult. I guess you learn something new every day. We'll know what it is in a minute. It's disgusting, but nothing you haven't seen before in other nightclubs. After all night, you feel the need to relieve yourself. Better here than in an alley. We've gotta wash our hands, because we, we are not savages. Small stains of a blackish dried up liquid decorate the edge of the sink. Inspect the stains. Success. It looks like dried blood. There must have been a fight. Okay, well, we're still gonna wash our hands. Wash your face. You turn on the faucet and after a second, a stream of ice cold water gushes out. Pouring water in your face, you immediately feel more awake. It's been a long night and you can't wait to go to bed. The rickety mirror looks back at you. On the other side, your battered effigy smiles unconsciously. When you notice that the poorly dressed and worse room mangled man leaning on the sink is you, the gesture of the reflection relaxes. And while it looks you in the eyes, you land in reality. Hey man, it's been a while since we've seen each other's faces. Not like this at least. What a fucking mess, huh? Looking down, you notice the stains in your shirt. But what are we doing? We are too old to be this late drinking brake fluid and shots of dishwater. Dishwater. Turning on the faucet, you take some water in your palms and drink with relish. Everything tastes like shit. Tomorrow's hangover is going to be huge. The music playing in the club, muffled by the bathroom walls, is reminiscent of the beating of a sick heart, like Johnny's. Johnny, when I met you, you were already dating Grace, and although I never quite liked her, she was good for you. She strained you out, got you on the right track, and well, now it's just me stuck with you. Taking out your cell phone, you see on the last screen the multiple text messages from Grace. Take care of John, please, Zach. Sure, Grace, but not because you asked. What the heck? What is going on? Momo, what is going on? Momo, what are you posting, bro? What are you doing? I'm seeing a whole lot of weird commands. <laughs> what the heck are you doing? Oh. Okay, we're suspecting that there's drugs in the vents. Alright, let's go find our friend, make sure he didn't die. Oh, it's another bouncer over here. VIP section.
Gabriel, do you really think this Anarch's cum deserves their respect? Taking a small sip from your glass, you savor the sweet taste of the vitae. It is exquisite. You have never tasted such a wine in your own life. Your mind is flooded by a torrent of nuances proper of the most complex of hearts. Cunningham, how the hell does an anarchist piece of shit like you get a vintage like this? Standing up, you reach into your pocket for your smartphone with no avail. I must have dropped it. Something going on in here. Before you, a girl dressed in a club uniform lies slumped, barely conscious. All around her, blood stains all over the floor match the wounds on her small, battered body. Her breathing, agitated and arrhythmic, accompanies her faint, racing heartbeat. Your whole being shudders, leaving you with a mixture of dismay, disgust, and desire. At her side, a sinister figure tends to her lacerations with quick, precise, almost surgical movements. Slowly, he turns his head to you, still applying bandages to the still open cuts. His eyes hidden behind round red letters. Her unnaturally pale complexion confirms that you knew the moment you set foot in your bathroom. The kindred. When you open your mouth about to ask what the hell is going on, the girl's eyes widen. They're coming for me. Help, Christophe. Christoph. Christoph. The respect. The bespectacled man turns his face towards her again with a gloved, slightly blood-stained hand, twirls his mustache, oiling it with a young woman's vitae. Easy now, my young guy. No one else is going to hurt you tonight. Turning his dark gaze to you again, his words descend slowly, dripping like the blood from the girl's wounds. As long as I am here, no one will harm the harvest. What the? Get me out of here, Christoph. Get me out of... Her plea is interrupted by the man, who, with a deft gesture, injects a vial in her, into her arm. Sleep now, my dear. Fear is an awful shade. What's going on here? An unfortunate ac- incident, young Rose. Nothing more. Behind the injected drug effects, the girl seems to be struggling to express something. They've, they've been... Who did this to you? Shh, enough, mon coeur. A guest wouldn't dare lay a hand on you. Removing the hair from his face, in the process smearing it with blood, the man proceeds to caress the young woman's face. Get away from her right now. She will die without me, and this and that is a price I am not willing to pay, young Rose. I'm cold, Christoph. Taking another vial, a very small red one, Christoph and Corkson holds it up to the girl's mouth, murmuring something. Drink, my sweet fine. The storm has been hard on you, but I am here. Who are you, and who has done this? You already know my name. Tenderly caressing the girl's head, the bespectacled man turns to you. I am the Vintner, the keeper of all heartless souls, and like my forefathers before me, I promised them eternal life. I am the one in charge of turning the water of life into wine, and I take care of my garden. You are the dometer of all the of all the ghouls of the heartless, ghouls that you then bleed to make the wine. I trust your appreciation will not become an accusation, young Rose. You know well the criminal beauty of our existence, and I am not an animal. I never harvest an unwilling vine. That is why the wine is so exquisite. It is not tainted with violence. So are you going to tell me what happened here? A very unfortunate incident with some extremely unpleasant clients. You're lying. I assure you, I do not, ma petite fleur. Okay. Are your clients always like this? The man's face darkens and his expression tightens into a grimace of disgust. Not until now. From tonight onwards, who knows? Ma pool vines. Tonight, there should be only one change in the shithole. The new regency of the Camarilla, and this kind of thing would never be done by an agent sent by the prince. Someone else is making a move for the heartless. If you have finished judging us, I recommend that you go back to the bar and wait for the rest of your party. Cunningham is waiting for you upstairs. Poor girl. Okay. what we can say to the DJ. 
Diane, it's been ages since the last time. How's it going, sweetheart? Hi, Leo. All good. Terrible place to meet again. What? Don't say that. Woman, this club rocks. I've only been DJing here for a couple nights and it's already one of my favorites. Certainly suits you, of course. I'll have to mention to Gabriel that I've seen you. You know that, don't you? But Diane... No buts, you idiot. We are at war. Since the last fiasco in Prague, the message is clear. Either you are with us or you are an enemy. And I don't care what you say, unbound or not. In the eyes of the sect, you are an enemy. You know we wouldn't hurt a fly, Diane. We just want to play our music, bring the madness to the dance force. Whatever you say, Leo. You cannot argue with those damn Malkavians. See you, Diane. Enjoy the evening. Yeah, Malkavians are all kind of crazy. All of them. The mountain of a man stands between you and the entrance to the VIP zone. Although he doesn't look like it at first glance, he is armed. Good evening, miss. I am deeply sorry, but Mr. Cunningham has just informed me that all the arrangements for your meeting are not ready yet. I would ask you to wait a little longer, please. It seems that everyone is late for their commitments today. It was predictable. This is what we get for dealing with anarchists. Those two are gone. Oh, oh! Somebody made a miss. A faint, almost imperceptible trail of blood. Something or someone has been dragged along the floor while bleeding. The trace comes from inside the cloakroom, but someone has gone to great lengths to try to erase it. It's just a cloakroom. Okay. So it's the, uh, it's the couple again. Their heart does not beat, they do not exhale when they breathe, and their skin is morbidly pale. Kindred, no doubt. Who the hell? When the couple notices the youth, they turn to, they turn to you with marked arrogance. Begin to size you up from head to toe, their brazenness so obvious it hurts. He nods while grinning an unpleasant smile. She tilts her head rhythmically from side to side, tapping on her lip with a finger. Well, well, look what the knife has dragged in. Be careful lest you scare her. Come here, little bird. Sit with us. I'd rather stand. See what you've done. Of course, it was my fault. In a reproachful tone, you know how quickly Toyodor get anxious at your sight. The creeping fear begins to crawl up your back. You are all alone facing two perfect strangers, canines no doubt, and knowledgeable about your clan. Who knows what else they know? Have we met before? Not directly, no. We don't, we don't hang out in the same joints as you. And yet here you are. In your head that sentence sounded much more confident. After you say it, you feel a tremor at the back of your throat. It's been a long time since her presence has disturbed you like this. Check it out. She's not only pretty, she's smart too. Here we are, yes, and we're not planning to leave anytime soon. Are you sure you don't want to sit down, beautiful? No. The silence that fills the room could be cut with a knife. The couple's eyes fixed on you seem to want to pierce you and discover what lies deep inside you. After a few external second, eternal seconds, the man starts talking again. Have you tried the wine, girl? It's very good. Although for my taste, drinking it out of a glass makes it lose. What's the word? Sentiment. That's it, sentiment, although it's fancier, that's true. Since Gabriel introduced you to the Canine Society, you have seen hundreds of different kindred, and yet, you would not be able to guess the clan to which these two belong. The arrogance of the Ventru, the elegance of Toreador, the eeriness of the Tremere. You're very quiet, pretty thing. You haven't told me your names, your clan, nor your sect. Both vampires' faces harden, growing serious at your words. As the man is about to respond, the woman waves her hand at him, cutting him off. You haven't introduced yourself either, beautiful. My sire taught me the power within names. But he didn't teach you manners, apparently. Young one should be the one to, to introduce themselves first. I'm here to meet Jackson Cunningham. He's waiting for me upstairs. I'm not looking for any kind of trouble. Jackson, Jackson, and here I thought you liked them rebellious. Come on, don't judge the man like that. Maybe he's experimenting. 
They both laugh del delightedly, showing their teeth, white and sharp. Embarrassment takes hold of you, and rage burns deep. What the hell do they think they are? Silence. Impossible. Presence dawns. Impossible. Mm. Let's just leave. Okay, slowly dragging their laughter for several infinite seconds, the couple eventually calms down. Hey, young lady. When you see Jackson, try to be more open. Talking to a wall isn't exactly entertaining. And tonight has to be one to remember. The woman turns her head to her companion with an arch eyebrow, looks at him incredulously. Since when do you give sound advice? Adjusting his tie, the man settles back in his chair. A couple of small pieces of glass from inside the sleeves of the man's pocket fall to the ground. Go away, little girl. Let us enjoy the rest of our drink. I'm sure we'll see you later. Clearly, something is very wrong. Tonight should have been a quiet night, a mere courtesy visit. A show of good intentions, and yet individuals from outside the Camarilla have managed to sneak into the Heartless. As soon as Tobias and Aiden arrive, you need to put Cunningham in his place and get out of here. I think I should investigate more. Let's do it. Notice this. So we have the rose here as a sign of Clan Toreador. The window leading into the cloakroom is completely smashed. Someone has tried to fix it in a hurry with a few wooden planks making a mess of it. There's no glass on this end, they're all inside. The window was blown out from outside, from here. I could try to remove the boards and see what's inside, but I'm probably gonna screw up my manicure. Well, let's go ahead and tear it off. With a violent snap, the wood, the weak wooden planks succumb to your supernatural strength. Those nine-inch nails didn't stand a chance. How uncivilized. Well, it gets the job done, girl. Who cares if it's uncivilized? The inside of the cloakroom is turned upside down. Clear signs of a fight dot the scene. The computer screen is broken. Papers are scattered in all directions. And on the desk, a pool of blood drips onto the floor. Poor girl. That's it. Hammers, nails, pliers, ordinary tools. With these, they must have boarded up the window. Well, they didn't do a well enough job of it. gone the front way. How is 
the evening progressing? Anything remarkable you'd like to confess? A sudden flush in her cheeks colors her pale complexion as she hears your compliments. Your influence over the kind continues to surprise you night after night. I only serve drinks to customers, Miss. I don't see. I don't ask questions. Come on, a whole night behind the bar. Words are sure to find their way to your ears. And effortlessly, I dare say, those who frequent these places rely on the drink to whisper the darkest truths to the most innocent ears. I might get in trouble, miss. No one needs to know. Tell me what ails you tonight. Ooh. Okay. As your eyes glow slightly pink, you feel the barmaid's knees weaken at your words, charged with the innate power of the Clan of the Rose. Tonight some new clients came in, strangers have never seen them before. They didn't use the door, suddenly they were inside. Someone must have snuck them in and they scare me. Describe them to me. They are a man and a woman, they are dressed in suits, black, they are like you, miss. There's no one like me, girl, remember that. Thanks for everything. Okay. Zach Riley, the clumsy young man, Fairly infatuated by your presence is having a drink with his friend. Both are a sorry sight, dirty, sweaty, and sticky, sipping more and more alcohol amidst laughter and wailing. And yet you would trade yourself for them in a heartbeat. You would leave behind everything you are to spend one last night as a mortal woman again. Come on, we don't have time to waste with the time. But they're late. Oh, whoa, okay. 
window is broken. The cloakroom attendant can be seen inside. Okay, I gotta go the front way, I guess. Where is Johnny Boy? The cloakroom shutter is up, and behind it, a young woman watches you shyly. When she catches your glance, she startles slightly and with a shy smile turns to you. Do, do you need something, sir? The girl appears to be a couple of years younger than you. Her smile is strange, artificial, her movement slow and clumsy. You notice that her wrist is bandaged. It looks like a recent cure. Her eyes convey confused, tired sadness. Uh, sorry, I know some of my business, but is this yours? The description of the young sweetheart fits you. Hey. Are you okay? Perfectly, sir. I don't worry about me. Everything's under control. Something tells me that everything is not under control. Let me ask her if she's seen our friend. The young man you saw with, you were with at the bar. I saw him go to the VIP zone with a couple of guests. The bastard's drunk as hell. What the fuck is he doing there? I don't know, sir. I'm telling you what I saw. It's true that he looks slow. Oh no, Johnny, what the fuck are you doing? Okay. Oh, that. Oh, she took the paper. She can't help but blush as she opens it and reads its contents. Her cheeks grow redder and redder to a comical point. Tucking her hair behind one ear, you notice that her right earring is missing. That idiot, excuse me, can I tell you something? I'm all ears. See that bouncer over there, the one in front of the stairs leading to the VIP zone? Yep. Yes, he wrote me this, but he didn't have the courage to give it to me, the coward. I saw him approach my stall at the beginning of the evening with something in his hand. But he turned away before he got here, and since then he hasn't come near me even to say hello. Are you two dating? Immediately, the young woman's face turns completely red. No, I mean nothing serious. Well, not at all. Yes, but no, it's complicated. Come on, woman, it's not that big a deal. If he has written this to you, it seems to me that he's serious and you seem to like him too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like him and I owe him a lot. He got me this job, you know. I wasn't in a good place in my life. I felt like everything was ending for me and he brought me here. He saved my life, so to speak. I'm really happy for you, for both of you. Good luck. Thank you. Aw, that's adorable. Okay. Well, she saw our friend at the VIP section. Weird guys aren't here anymore. <laughs> Is it horrible? Sorry. I'm doing my face. Alright, we gotta go to the VIP area. The gorilla. They should have kept that open. But I guess they wanted to make it like an elevated thing. Forgetting there's a whole wall over here. The colossal bouncer looks at you reluctantly, watching you approach the entrance to the VIP area. What the hell do you want now? Have you seen my friend? Yes, your drunk friend is upstairs at the express invitation of the boss. And couldn't you let me through, man? My buddy's really fucked up. I gotta take him home. No way, without an invitation, no one passes through here. Where is the boss? Well, okay, let's see if we can sneak in here. Now we're in trouble. DJ, can you hear me? Sudden shout startles you, startles you slightly, but the DJ smirk reassures you. He didn't understand the reference, but at least the DJ's attention is now yours. Hey, have you seen my buddy the guy I came in with? He, we were drinking at the bar, we went to take a piss, and I haven't seen him in a while. Sure, dude, he went up a company to the VIP zone. He looked out of his mind. Fuck, what the hell is Johnny doing there? No idea. Hi, Johnny. What are you doing, man? Oh, if we 
had a if we had a screwdriver. Let's see. If we get a screwdriver, I might be able to sneak into the VIP zone. Where the hell am I supposed to get that? Oh, outside. I know where. I know where. I know where. I can solve the puzzle. Whatever with me, they won't miss it. Yes, let's go. Let's go. We're gonna save you, buddy. We're gonna save you, Johnny. We're gonna try. It's taking me a while, though, to rescue our buddy. grill that's a weak current pass through. If I get a screwdriver, I might be able to sneak into the VIP zone. Yes, let's do it. With a screwdriver tightly gripped, you stand in front of the grill. Here we go. What the hell? The shelf is cluttered with jars and pots of different sizes and colors. Inside, shapeless things float and ripe. This can't be real. And yet it is. Plants, roots, and stuffed animals occupy the shelves that are not filled with vials of dubious contents. It looks like a fucking mad scientist lab. I need to get out of here as soon as possible. I need to find Johnny now. Right? Thick plastic metal tubes connected to the stretcher and spinner. A gloomy stretcher with straps for wrists, torso, and ankles. It is quite worn. Fuck. Multiple wooden boxes with strange delivery notes. Inside the open ones are multicolored pills, strange herbs, and elegantly decorated sachets. A pin board filled with newspaper clippings, oddly colored paper, and photographs. Are those the employees of the club? The ominousness of the situation begins to make you more and more nervous. You just want to get out of here, run away, and leave this whole night behind as if it were all the result of a bad dream. Among all the elements nailed to the board, a note isolated from the rest catches your attention. Kristoff, I need you to bring up a couple of bottles of your best stuff tonight. We discreet, come up through the back door. I just changed the key, use your card, and put in the code 7049. I'm sure our guests will appreciate your vintage. Trust me, after tonight, no one will dare tell us what to do. Signed, Jackson. 7049. Leaving the note back on the board, you make sure to burn the note into your memory, just in case. 7049. 7049. Okay. Crawling this way I have come. Crawling this way I shall return, and the sooner the better. Okay, let's see if we can get a bottle of that vintage here. Okay, never mind. We'll just go grab that old. Hey, what's up, Thunder? 7049. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, let's go. We're gonna rescue you, Johnny. We got you, buddy. Okay. We're gonna go swipe that bottle real quick. No, we can't swipe it. Why not? Your gaze slowly sweeps over the table where Diane was a while ago. Since you joined Johnny to take that last one, you haven't seen her again. You can't help but feel a pang of relief at the thought of never seeing her again. I could have at least asked her for her number. Yes, sorrows, sorrows, regrets, regrets. It's locked by a magnetic card reader and a four digit code. Now, where can I get that reader? <laughs> Oh, okay, let's return it to her. Maybe she'll give us that key card to help us rescue our friend so he doesn't die and gets turned into wine. How many bottles of wine do you think a full body will fill up, like a whole adult? A 
feel like it'll only be like a case. Two cases at the most, probably. Alright, let's give her back the golden earring. Thank you. Okay, now help us. The suited man joins in the laughter of his companion, please. Raising a hand with an annoyed gesture, Kristoff stops the mockery of the suits. Speak, Zach Riley. The witches told me that you would know why Johnny, my friend, has been taken to the VIP zone. He's very drunk. I have to take him home. Under the dim lights of the glass and terrace, Kristoff's face takes on a faint tone. His thin, 
taut mouth turned into a slender straight line under his perfect moustache, trembled slightly. Upstairs, he said, to the VIP zone. What's the matter, Chris? Cat got your tongue. Old Cunningham doesn't tell you things anymore, huh? Silence. You're the minor zone. Hello, hello. Welcome in. The suited couple smiles viciously, looking at the bespectacled man. After a couple of seconds, the woman clicks her tongue and turns to you. Tonight is a very special night, honey. Your friend has been honored to be invited to the celebration. I have no doubt he will be having the time of his life. I'm sure you're dying to go up too, aren't you? I just want to pick up Johnny and go home. It's been such a long night. We've had too much to drink and enough. The words recede in your throat, burying themselves deep in your stomach when you hear his powerful voice. Enough, both of you. How squeamish, Crystal. Yes, we haven't done anything to him yet. Heaven forfend. What kind of celebration and why is a drunk like Johnny invited? The kind of celebration that requires no questions asked to be invited, nice. You know what they say about those who make too many, anyway. Don't say things like that, you're going to scare the kid and he's scared enough as it is. Where is my friend? Her crude taunt hits you harder than you thought it would, and before you know it, you find yourself clenching your fist so hard you hurt yourself. Leave him alone. Kristoff's voice echoes across the terrace. What happens upstairs is Jackson's business, not mine nor yours. But you heard the man, boy. Go on. Shit, Johnny, what have you gotten yourself into? Yes, I'm sure Johnny doesn't know anything about all the blood vials and stuff.
rapidly spinning a series of vials filled with a red liquid. I could break down this. I'm sure the noise would attract the attention of the bouncer guarding the entrance to the VIP lounge. Centrifuge this? Alright. Striking the machine hard with this screwdriver you used to enter an agonizing metallic sound floods the room as black smoke begins to emanate 
from the centrifuge. That should do it. In the distance, you hear the bouncer's voice uttering exp expletives. He'll be here in a matter of seconds. I have to get the hell out of here. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> centrifuge this, motherfucker. Okay. Let's go. Let's go get our friend. We don't have a key card. They got him out of the way. You see a card reader with the bouncer's card inserted. Excellent! Come to daddy. That's right. Come to daddy card. 7049. It's the time. It's the time. teeth grinding. His normally calm temperament is on edge. And although you all know that if things were to get out of hand, you would be on the losing end, the young venture's blue blood boils in his veins before Tobias or even Aiden himself can open their mouths and, in and inevitably screw up, you decide to make your move. You are going to explain us what the hell is going on here, starting with what happened in the very next room. I thought you were different, that the Heartless wasn't just another pit of senseless violence and vicious savagery. Easy, Diane. Mind your words. Before you, Jackson Cunningham, anarchist regent of the Heartless, makes himself comfortable in his armchair, enjoying each and every one of your words with a crooked smile in his ugly mouth. His appearance, very typical of the punks of the 80s, seems today almost a caricature, and yet he looks in his element. Behind him, two other thugs dressed in similar regalia dominate the exit, all kindred, all ruha. No need to be so ungrateful, you little bitch. It was a gift. Can't you accept it with your characteristic grace and dignity? Tobias, raising a hand, points at Jackson with a threatening gesture. You don't know who you're talking to, rabble. Oh. Tobias, you idiot. You think I haven't done my homework, choir boy? His voice slowly begins to gain volume. I know very well who you are, and I know exactly who your sire is. Who are your sires? Who is your shadow? What you can and cannot do? But it seems to me that you are the ones who do not understand who I am. His eyes wide open, revealing the entirety of his iris. I'm Jackson fucking Cunningham. Okay. Okay, bro. His voice, slightly higher pitched than one would expect, is still capable of shaking the walls. His anger is genuine. If there was a baron in this rotten shit town, it would be me, and that's why you're here today, fuck dolls, to negotiate, or are you not? Yes, to negotiate your adhesion to the ivory tower. Ew, guys, nasty. Throwing his head back, Jackson loads a bloody phlegm and spits it against the ground. Nasty! What? Damn you. A piercing cry of panic coming from the next room snatches the attention of your entire coterie. What the hell was that? Easy now, the three of you. We're dealing with important things here. Fucking important, I dare say. You know the conditions. Aye, the princing sent me a letter. A fucking letter. Princeling. 
Aiden, please. Have you seen the conditions, hot stuff? I have. Do they seem fair to you? You have no other choice. Careful now. Jackson turning to his bodyguards has had a shrill, unpleasant laugh. I guess not, pussy cats, and yet I refuse. His words take you completely by surprise, hitting you where it hurts the most, in your lack of preparation. What? Well, you just expected him to, like, agree to unfair conditions? I refuse. Simple as that. Neither I nor any kindred related to the Heartless will join the fucking Camarilla. You don't understand anything that's happening. This was going to be a cordial visit. The deal was already closed, and now this? Before you can come out of your reverie, Tobias begins to speak while adjusting his black leather gloves. Are those things going to be your last words, Bruja? Ain't you the cheeky one? No, no, no. Tobias, stop. Let Diane speak. This fucking rich, the venture and the Tremere at the service of the delicate Toreador. Speak, child. There's still time to correct this. There's still time to correct this, Cunningham. Before anyone can say anything else, a second scream of pain from the next room catches the attention. Followed immediately by a resounding thud against the wall. How old are you lambs supposed to be? You are young, very young. And yet look at you, knee deep in cold shit, wars and what not paraphernalia. You have no fucking idea what this world is like and yet you claim it for yourselves. Oh no, not for you, for your sires, for your princes, for those who suck their dicks at the expense of a more important title. And for what? So that you can strut around the Elysium? The Heartless will never join your farce. Then we have no more business here. Not about the bag. Oh, things are happening. Five minutes before. In front of you at last is the door to the VIP room. Where Johnny is supposed to have been brought as a guest. Come on, we go in, we get this idiot, and we leave. The moment your hand touches the doorknob, a shiver runs through you from top to bottom like a terrible electric shock that engraves in your mind. Something is wrong. Whoa, instinct is saving us right now. Instinct. Okay, what's going on? Johnny, what did you do, man? Turning the knob and pushing hard, the door finally gives way before you, and the sight inside you greets you with solemn cruelty. Johnny? No. Johnny, is that you? No, no, no. To the high ceiling fan, Johnny's lifeless body is hanging upside down, his jugular vein open, his blood dripping onto several glasses, carefully placed underneath like a shot board. Terror grips your mind, the image of your best friend butchered, treated like a pig, penetrates your mind with the ferocity of a beast. Man, Johnny is not having a good day. He just broke up with his girlfriend and now he's hanging over here like just dripping from the ceiling. Man. Okay. A scream of panic rips its way through your to through your throat. Johnny, oh Johnny. Call the police! Call them now! Bursting into tears, you approach Johnny's body. Rigor mortis has left his face, forever etched with a grimace of absolute dread. You didn't deserve this. No, never. It's like cannibals. They're cannibals. The shot glasses fill to the top with blood, spread out before you like a cruel field of red flowers. Why did they do this to you? To drink? No. Trying not to accept the new dark reality that unfolds before you. You embrace sorrow as a way of escape and sobbing. You push away thoughts of monsters praying in nightclubs to drink your blood. After a few interminable and bitter minutes, your mind comes to articulating the only logical thought. I have to get out of here. Get help. As you turn around, two dark figures block your exit. A couple in suits. Hello, little lamb. Going somewhere. Ah, shit. Primal fear grips you as you look into the bright eyes of the smiling couple. You are able to clearly see their fangs, long and sharp, and there's no strength left in you to deny the obvious. Vampires. 
Yes, and the wrong kind, too. In the blink of an eye, the woman is immediately in front of you and with impossible speed grabs you by the collar of your shirt. Okay. Lights out. Your whole body shoots out. Oh shit, as if you are a ragdoll thrown violently against the wall. You feel how the blow has shattered all your bones, perforated some organ, and above all, you feel how there is no way out. With your last breaths, you let out a cry of pain. You are going to die here, Zach Riley. Before your consciousness finishes fading away in a cloud of pain, you see how the man pulls out a cell phone, and holding it up to his face, he says, We are in a position. Commence Operation Cathedralis Tenebrae. Oh yeah, so I think this takes place after Prague, Prague after the, um, the Inquisition. When you come to waves of pain run through your body, the assailants hit you in the head with something extremely hard, and you feel the blood flowing down your temples. After a couple of seconds, you realize what's around you. Jackson's office turned into a full-blown battlefield. Oh shit, our girl's just, our girl's just over there like sprawled out on the floor. Turning quickly to where your companions were, the reality shocks you, leaving you completely frozen. Are those our companions, just like ragdolled over here. Aiden? Tobias? Slowly getting up, the whole world is spinning around you. The pain is indescribable, and you know that if you don't feed, you will die. Just like everyone else around you. Yeah, I have two, uh... I only have two bars, so I need to fill that up. Little bird, the shadows are back. Where your coterie was just a few minutes ago, now there are only bones, blood, and ashes remaining. Aiden, Tobias, no. You would cry if you could, but the little vitae left in your body is the only thing that separates you from the final death. I never told you, but thank you for everything. Saying goodbye was never your strong suit. But having to say goodbye to someone immortal is even more complicated. I swear I will avenge you. I will avenge you, my friends. Ruin to your prince. Run to your prince. Run, little bird. The shadows are back. The shadows. A horrible symbol tops off the head of the message. An inverted onk riddled with spikes. Sabat. Oh. Johnny's corpse still hangs from the ceiling, but he has been dead for so long that the blood scattered on the floor and pulled into various vessels disgusts you to no end. As you reek and sense his candle room, you suddenly hear the faint beating of a dying heart, and following the sound, you locate its source, Zach Riley. Well, time to make a child. This is grizzly, bro. Why doesn't she drink from this pool? I know it's 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 not fresh anymore, but come on. Don't waste them. Don't waste the guy. At least give his life meaning. Collapse on the ground over a pool of blood, like Zach Riley, fighting against death, facing the odds. Feed. Zach. Feed. I feed! I am so sorry. Reaching for the man's neck, you sink your fangs into his jugular and drink with relish. Slowly, the blood sliding down your throat begins to heal you. With each slow sip, you notice one less heartbeat. Go on, go on, go on, go on. He is dead, anyway. Grr, get him. Okay. But you stop. Your body asks for more. The beast craves more, and yet, you stop. Riley, Diane, no, I don't want to die, and you don't want to see him die either. Something about this weak human has caught your attention all night long. Not his physical beauty, but not his fashion sense, no. But something beyond that, something you almost thought was lost in our society, a willingness to sacrifice. Flooded with your regained strength, you bring your rest to your mouth, and biting down hard, blood immediately gushes out abundantly. Drink, quickly. 
with your slender wrist over his mouth, Zack slowly drinks the sweet vitae. Slowly at first, faster and faster, until it's enough. Giving a tug, you separate your arm from the man, who still drenched in sweat and blood begins to heal. The effect of the vampiric blood coursing through his veins. You too? There's no time for explanations. The answer is yes. Yes and no. Come with me. When we get out of here, we can talk. Go with you? Yes, and quickly. Zack, now standing, seems to be assessing the regenerative effects of the blood coursing through his veins as he opens and closes his hands and feels his chest. Have you, have you turned me into? No, I've only healed you, but now we have to leave. I will follow you, Diane. Okay. Goodbye, bro. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Can't you do anything for him? I'm afraid not. What are we supposed to do? Cops are about to come. We've got a whole war going on. The whole place literally exploded on us. I lost two of my friends. This has been a horrible night. rapidly bleeding to death. Several wounds for her ar furrow her arms and legs, and a terrible bite on her neck seems to be the main culprit. Diane, she's still alive. In a feeble attempt to speak, the waitress only manages to cough up blood all over her shirt, her skin growing whiter and whiter. Zack, no, I can't help her. I don't have enough strength. Well, come on, we've got to help her. Diane, quick. Oh God, hang on, hang on. Grief grips you, appreciating human mortality so closely. Zack on the verge of tears embraces the almost lifeless body of the bartender, a complete stranger to him as he implores you to save her life. But you yourself have almost no strength to save your own life. Feeding Riley was more costly than you had anticipated. Zack, we have to go. No, we have to help her, Diane. We have to, Zack. Come on, she's gone. Should have fed on her then. Where's that special vitae? Do they have any bottles left? Tremere ritual, a portal of some kind. Apparently it took several kindred am along the way, as well as a few humans. Another poor victim of tonight's savage and senseless violence. This one has been completely charred to the bone on the spot. When we finally set foot outside the heartless where the carnage took place, the cold rain greets you mercilessly. Diane, we have we have to get help. Call the police? Don't worry, they'll be around, but they're not going to help us as much as others. Others? I'm so sorry, Zach, I really am, but you're coming with me. Suddenly, Zach's breathing becomes even more irregular. Why are you sorry? Because your life as you knew it comes to an end tonight, and it's all my fault. But I would have died without your help, and, and now you wouldn't be involved in any of this. There are nights when I really wish I had nothing to do with any of this, but... Biting your lip, you stifle those useless feelings that you've been clutching in your chest since you were human. We have to go back to my sire, Gabriel. He will know what to do next. Your sire? Yes, the one who turned me. My father, if you want to hear it in closer terms. But we have to go now. I'll follow you. Zach, really, this is going to be very hard to hear, but you can't go back to your old life. Do you understand me? 
No, I don't understand you, but I would follow you to death. You know it's not real. You know it's the effect of your Toyodor Vitae coursing through his veins. You know that when it wears off, he'll try to abandon you like so many others. And yes, you can't help but painful smile. Cursed be the dreams and the hopes. Cursed be all those who try to destroy them likewise. Aiden, Tobias, with one last thought, you approach Zack, and placing a kiss on his lips, you whisper in his ear. Let's go, love. And leaning on each other, they made their way towards the end of the night in search of Gabriel, Toridor, Primogen, and Diane's sire. And so it begins. Thus it ends. I think we are talking about very different things. Think? You don't think. You know. Maybe. Tell me, old friend, are they really so different? Oh, of course, the rook will fall, no doubt, but it is the pawn that will really show the quality of the game. Any chance that the pawn will find his true side? That's something he won't even be able to decide himself. It's getting late. The sun will be up soon. Good luck, Abyss Walker. I'm sure we'll see you in the future. If not as allies, if, as, if not as allies, you won't see us coming, Harry. Did I finish the game? Is that all it is? I wanted some action. You know, it's not bad. It's not a it's not a terrible one shot. Okay, it's not bad, not bad. I was wondering when we'd be able to save, but it was actually just like a really short game. Here we go. You find yourself surrounded by the void. Press enter or A to continue. Beelzebub, the great fly. Greetings, little one. Please don't mind me. It is just I. Good old Beelzebub. Okay, new game. Story of the Helltaker again. Interesting. Do you by any chance need a narrator? Why, please, allow me. It will be a pleasure. Excellent. You woke up one day with a dream. Power and full of demon girls. Oh, I think this is a sexy game. <laughs> let me double check real quick. Hold on. <laughs> I don't want to get banned here. Hold on. Let me double check if this is a sexy game or not. <laughs> One second. Free to play cute demons puzzle indie. It doesn't say anything about it being a naughty game. Oh, wait, it is. It is a naughty game. It is a naughty game. We can't play this one. I gotta pick something else. <laughs> gotta pick something else for today. It's just a sexy game. Are we allowed to play sexy games on here? 
What's the law on that? Are we, are we allowed to? Because this is a harem building game. I'm not sure just how spicy it gets. What do you guys think? Are we allowed to play hentai games on Twitch? I don't think we are, right? Choose something else. We gotta choose something else.